If you are new to the grocery shopping game, I'm going to share some tips that everyone should know when they're trying to save money on the grocery budget. But even if you have been doing this for a while, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper to each one of these tips and hopefully give you some ideas that the pros, I mean, the people who are so good at saving money on groceries know and utilize when they are managing their family kitchens. First things first, check your pantry, fridge, and freezer and use stuff up. If you can possibly delay going to the grocery store by a day or two, I have mentioned over and over again what a great money saving strategy this is. I don't know if anybody else out there is like our family, but I know that once I go to the store and I buy new food, that some of the old food, even if it's still good, is probably gonna get pushed to the back of the refrigerator or forgotten in the back of the pantry. I'm talking about stuff that might spoil, like produce or dairy items in the refrigerator or open packages and half-used packages of things in the pantry. Whereas, if I make an effort to use those things up before I go to the store again, I am being a good steward of the food that we already have and of the money that I have already spent. I've harped on this idea so often that I have an entire playlist devoted to this concept. I call them pantry cooking or use it up challenge videos. They are linked in the description box below if you were looking for ideas or inspiration. We have actually already done this. Before we left to visit grandparents for spring break, we did a little use it up pantry challenge. And now I'm going to do something else that I highly recommend before you head out to the store. While I think it is a great idea to use up some items before you head out to the store, especially perishable items like produce from the refrigerator, I'm not saying you have to use up every ounce of food before you head to the store. So one of the things that I try to do after I have done that little pantry challenge and use things up that I already have on hand is to just do a little tidy up. It is a great time, especially when the refrigerator is mostly empty, to do a little wipe down of the drawers and all of the spaces in the refrigerator. It's a great time to get in the pantry and just do a little bit of cleanup. Because one of the things I have discovered is that if my family can't see it, they can't eat it. And there are so many times when something gets pushed to the back or something gets you know, dropped to the bottom of a bin and we've forgotten that it's there. The next step is to make a plan. People who are pros at saving money on groceries typically make grocery lists and they make meal plans. There are so many different ways that you can do this. Some people just like to have sort of a capsule of recipes that they can continually choose from, just their family's favorites, their go-tos, and they keep the ingredients for those on hand. Other people like to make a specific plan for each day of the week and know exactly what they're gonna cook and then exactly what they need to purchase after they've shopped their pantry first. Sometimes for my family, the meal plan is determined by what I am filming for the week. For instance, I am filming a crock pot meals video this week, so as I was sitting down planning this video, I was jotting down some things that I know I'm going to want to pick up at the grocery store to make that meal plan work. I also keep a couple of notepads taped up on the inside of a cabinet in my kitchen. My kids know where these are and as we run out of things that they need or want, they will put things on that list so that I know I can grab that as I'm running out the door to go to the grocery store. But if this is something that you are already practicing and you still find yourself having difficulty staying within your grocery budget, I want you to think about the possibility of simplifying your menu. I'm not saying that you have to go from having lots of different choices and variety in your meals to all of a sudden only eating beans and rice at every single meal, but when it comes to budget cooking, variety is a luxury. So one way that this might play out in a more realistic, sustainable way that's not a super drastic change is to consider changing just one of your meals. Maybe you wanna keep the variety and some of the luxury that you have in your dinner meal plan. But if you are eating something different for breakfast every day, maybe you narrow it down to just one thing. And to take that concept one step further, I know that if you are making your own sausage, egg, and cheese breakfast burritos, instead of going through the drive-thru every morning, you are probably saving some money. But a bowl of oatmeal with a little bit of banana and some peanut butter is probably gonna be even cheaper than those sausage, egg, and cheese breakfast burritos. The next step in this grocery savings strategy can actually be interchanged 
with the meal planning or they can at least go side by side and that is shopping weekly sales. Sometimes people like to build their entire meal plan around what's on sale at their local grocery stores and I actually just pulled into my local traditional grocery store Reesers. It is owned by Brookshire's for those of you in Texas who know that grocery chain and I'm going to pop in here and grab a few of the things that are on sale because a lot of times those weekly sales that they advertise in their sales flyers are even better than what you will find at supermarkets and big box stores that are traditionally much cheaper. For instance, butter is something that I need to restock this week and the sale price on butter at my Reesers is actually lower than the sale price at Aldi, which is known for its low prices, especially their sale prices, right? But I think it's important to temper our expectations where this is concerned because just like our grocery budget from two years ago, if it's the same today, it's not going to purchase the exact same things we were able to purchase two years ago. The sale prices that we see are also going to adjust accordingly. So it's really important to set some realistic expectations and determine whether or not we need to change what we're purchasing or if we need to increase that budget a little bit, even given that we're shopping sales and using some of these other saving strategies. You're gonna see me visiting multiple grocery stores in this grocery haul today, and that can be a really effective saving strategy. Obviously, you don't want to spend a lot of extra money on gas or a lot of extra time because time is money. Visiting additional stores if you're having to go really far out of your way or off your regular beaten path to make that happen. But if there are several different stores and different shopping options in your area, especially if they're close together, it can be a good savings strategy for your grocery shopping because you can visit each store and get the absolute best deals. You can get the loss leaders for the stores that run stay at sales. You can check for the clearance markdowns at the different stores and as you get to know their basic everyday prices, you know what a good deal is. One way to dive just a little bit deeper with this saving strategy is to consider visiting a new store. Is there a new supermarket in your area? Is there a place that you've avoided because you think that it's really expensive? Maybe when you get inside the store and you see different sales and specials or maybe a loyalty shopping card program that they have or in-store discounts and coupons, you might be surprised what you will find. Last year, I visited a discount bread store, like a discount bakery, and it is off of my usual path that I tread in my day-to-day -day life and errands, but any time that I am in that area and I have an extra 20 minutes, I do try to run in there and pick up some items because the price of bread, which is you know a common kitchen staple for a family, has gone up and it's worth it to me to pick up several loaves and pop them into my freezer when I'm going by that store. So if you see some stores in your area that you haven't tried or maybe there's a new place that is being built or just a place you haven't visited in a while, it might be worth checking out just to see what deals may be available there. And speaking of driving around visiting different grocery stores, if you want to earn a little cash back on your gas plus other purchases you may be making, then you want to check out today's sponsor, Upside. Upside is a free app that can get you cash back on daily essentials like gas, groceries, and dining. And there are over a hundred thousand gas stations, grocery stores, and restaurants on the Upside app. When I am using Upside, I just open up the app and I see the offers that are available in my area. I claim one of those offers and then I just go to that place and make a purchase. I follow the directions in the app, which sometimes are simply make the purchase. And then Upside will add the cash back to my Upside account. I can cash in my Upside earnings anytime directly to my bank account, or I can choose a gift card from a host of different restaurant and retailer options, which for my family usually means free tacos. Yay. Upside earners are making as much as $300 a month. To find out how much you could earn, just click the link in the description box to download the free Upside app and use my promo code Mindy. That promo code is going to get you an extra 25 cents back per gallon on your first tank of gas with Upside. Again, that's promo code Mindy when you download the free Upside app. Just follow the link in the description box below. And thank you again to Upside for sponsoring today's video. Grocery savings pros definitely understand the value of purchasing mostly generic or house brands. And if you are an Aldi shopper, you probably already resign yourself to this because about 80 to 90 percent of their store is their house brand their Aldi brand but most grocery stores not just big box stores like Walmart and Target but also traditional supermarkets are probably gonna carry a house brand of items some people refer to these as off brands or dupes but they are usually going to cost a lot less
less than the comparable name brand product. If you are struggling to make the switch between name brand and generic products, to make the switch from name brand to generic products, I wanna challenge you to take a look at what you are purchasing. Because I will admit that Doritos and Oreos definitely have a singular taste and texture that is difficult to duplicate. But I find it much more difficult to discern between this can of name brand green beans at $1.48 a can and this can of generic brand green beans at 64 cents a can. I'm basically paying more than double the price to have the name brand and I gotta be honest with you, I can't really tell the difference. I have often said that the simpler and shorter the ingredient list, the more likely it is to taste like the name brand, the easier it is in my opinion to do. So if you are cooking with simple ingredients, if you are cooking with you know, canned and frozen vegetables that don't have a lot of things added to them, simple starches like rice and pasta, if you are using a simpler ingredient list to make your meals, I think it is much easier to make the switch from name brand to generic products and save a lot of money but not sacrifice a lot of taste. Grocery savings pros look for clearances or items that are marked down for quick sale. I'm actually sitting outside of Aldi, and while they aren't necessarily known for their clearance finds, they are there. I get excited when I see those little red stickers, especially when they're on the bread items or on the meat items. And if I'm shopping on just the right day, I can find some really great markdowns and clearanced out items even at the store. Several of you have mentioned that you get to know the sales cycles and the markdown cycles of the stores where you shop. Maybe you have a relationship with some of the people who work there and so you learn the days of the week when they mark down certain things. I will add with this grocery saving strategy to be really realistic about the things that your family will actually consume and the storage space that you have. Does anybody remember the heyday of extreme couponing? It's been well over 10 years since I was a couponer and I will admit that there were some things that I purchased that I ended up throwing away months or even years later and I purchased it because it was a good deal and I had a coupon for it and I was getting it for super cheap or even free. But when I stopped to think about, okay, is this something my family is actually going to use? I realized that was an important question because even if I get it for cheap, even if I'm just spending a quarter, 25 cents on it, if my family won't consume it, then that's 25 cents and a product that's wasted. And we also have to be realistic about the storage space that we have. I know there are some people who simply have more space. Maybe they have a basement where they are able to stockpile all the good deals they find on food from sales and clearance markdowns. Maybe they have an additional freezer or a chest freezer. It took my husband and I four houses and 12 years of marriage before we had a kitchen with an actual pantry. We were just using, you know, cabinets that were in the kitchen to hold some of our food. We maybe had a few shelves in the garage for canned goods. It was a while before before we saved up the money to be able to afford a chest freezer. So I totally understand the idea that, hey, I have limited space, so I can't always take advantage of all the deals. I've sort of touched on organizing the kitchen, the pantry, and the fridge a little bit already, but I think it bears repeating that it's important if you're going to get your money's worth out of your food to prep and store it properly, especially perishable items so that they will last as long as possible. On a big grocery shopping day like today, I do take the time to make sure that things are getting put away in spaces where we know exactly where they will be, where they are going to be refrigerated or frozen appropriately. I also take a little bit of time to prep some of my produce. There are certain produce items that I have noticed last a little bit longer if I do a vinegar rinse, where I let them soak in cold water with a little bit of vinegar and then let them dry and then store them that way. But now that I've already spent this money on this Food, I want to make sure that we are able to actually consume it, that it doesn't go bad, that it doesn't get pushed to the back of the fridge or the pantry and forgotten. So I'm going to make sure that I am taking the time being intentional with how I store and prepare it. I visited three different grocery stores today and I used a lot of the saving strategies that I mentioned. And for everything that you're seeing here in this grocery haul, I paid about $210. I think that's not too bad at all considering that I got the things that I needed to make meals for the week plus restocked some items that we're out of that are gonna last longer than just this week. The USDA recommendations for a family my size on a low budget is a little over $300 per week. That's what it estimates it would cost to feed my family. So coming in well below that, and also uh, being able to restock the kitchen with things that are gonna go beyond just this week, I think that's a pretty good deal. Don't forget to check out the free Upside app. There's a link in the description box below and use my promo code Mindy. Thank you again to Upside for sponsoring. Make sure that you're subscribed. Pick out one of these videos to watch next and I'll see you there.